All right, so this is going to be my demo uh, using Prisma Colors. I don't know how far I'll be able to get on this in 30 minutes, but I'm going to try to talk about what I'm doing as I'm doing it. I have my Prismas right here. I have my picture right here and my scrap paper over there that you can't really see, so I'll try to get that where it's a little bit more prominent. And I have huge surprise. Here's a Ninja Turtle. Um, it's the movie Raphael where he's in his trench coat. Um, it is up on my shelf, so I drew it. And um, I just wanted you guys to be able to see the reference. Um, but yeah, so that's what we're going to be coloring. So, um, you can kind of start wherever you want. You don't have to, like, start any particular way. I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to start with the hat because that's what I started drawing. So since the hat is brown and kind of has like a like a reddish thing around it, I'm going to grab some different colors to play around with. I am going to grab black because I do think I'm probably going to be using some of that. And um, I'm going to see about if I can mix a golden rod for some of my highlights. And I'll go ahead and grab the white out because it does have some pretty legitimate highlights on it. So... Um, first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to kind of test these out on my test piece of paper. Uh, that's perfect color for just the base of the hat, or base brown of the hat. This, darker than I thought it was going to be. So, um, let me see what that looks like if I throw some red on it. A little bit closer. Oh, not that one. Let's see. Ooh, already up to blending three different colors together. Yeah, look at that. Um. Yeah, and it has some actual like white highlights on it, which will be pretty fun. And then. Where it is brown, but it is a little bit lighter. Let's see how this golden rod looks mixed in with it. Yeah, that's really good for that. And then just to kind of show you guys what, hold on, see, clearing off all the the red from this white. And then look, you can build that white up and whiten that up really good. And that might be nice if. I probably should have put that up there to do it. All right. Good. Sharpen the brown. And I'm probably going to go ahead and just start by putting a little bit of a base coat down. Because, you know, for the most part, this hat is just brown. Um, the edge of the brim looks like it's pretty much just going to be this color so I'm going to try to make sure that I get like a good solid color of this now one thing to kind of be aware of as you're using Prisma colors is um, you know you can work over pencils but I want you guys to notice how lightly I've drawn on here um, you know, the darker you draw, the more likely you are to um, make um, but using the, um, you know, drawing lightly 
is really good for um, these pencils because, Lord, whenever I get interrupted, I just lose whatever I'm doing. Bet that's a huge surprise to you guys. Um, oh, but um, just as an FYI, Prismas and Sharpies don't mix super great. So, um, but with the nature of the sharp um, of the Prismas, and if you do need black areas, the black Prismacolor pencil works great because um, you know you can use it essentially like a sharpie if you if you wanted to. See, and he's got a highlight to kind of show brim of the hat. And this is dark, so I'm going to go ahead and darken this up. And you can see that I'm not just going, you know, tearing into this with, um, uh, you know, doing solid. Because I'm going to be really kind of like going back and forth to build up these different colors. I'm going to go ahead and darken that, and then since I'm going to be using this, and that is going to be like an almost white highlight, so just to throw a little bit on there. Oh, that's the wrong one. I'll go ahead and do that here, too. Oh, look at that. It's beautiful already. Um, so... You know, a lot of this is sort of experimenting and seeing, like, what the colors look like when you mix them together. I'm go ahead and throw some of this goldenrod on there because that did really liven up the overall color. I'll probably be layering back over this. Actually, I will be layering back over this because it's a little bit on the yellower side. Uh huh. All right. And that is going to be a little dark right there. Go ahead and throw a little bit of red over in this part right here before I hit it with that other Tuscan red. was this dark brown might solve all my problems that'll solve some of them it rolled under my sketchbook so it looked black uh all right that tuscan red Now I'm going to start kind of going in with the dark brown for some of my darker areas. So there's a shadow on the very back. It's pretty bold, so I'm not going to try to blend it in so much. And then also on this, so I'm going to use that to blend that. And there's a little bit of a shadow right there and up on this other side over here which really makes that highlight pop Got 
can see that it's almost like when you do like the additive and subtractive method, like there's not going to be a whole lot of line. You're really kind of getting like edge to edge almost of these different colors. Where you're not going to have like a bold outline like you would in a comic or something. Because imagine that everything just goes back to comics. Darken this up to help that pop some more. Now, a lot of this is actually like a fairly white highlight. So I'm going to just kind of build up these tones just a little bit with our brown yellows before I kind of lay into it with this because this really mutes the white while still kind of giving it a pretty bold highlight and that's what I want because even though the highlight is pretty white and it's not just kind of like a light area still has that mutinous from the color. Pull some of this brown back into it. And I'm gonna go back in with the dark brown. Yay. this value back up. And I may have to throw a little bit of black in there to kind of help maximize that contrast. Because it is a fairly stark shadow. And go over and backtrack so you can see layering here almost like if you're using oil pastels that's just really how you're going to be able to kind of build in all these colors like you want And I am checking these to see how the lead's looking as I go through them. Just to make sure that I'm not going to pick up one that has, um, that's not sharp enough. So I won't get those white lines in this. I ain't about that life. Looks like this buckle's almost sort of yellow. Still very muted. Build that back in for a little bit of contrast. Now, here I need to get a little bit down there. It's not going to be a total bright white. There we go. Look at that. No. All right, time to sharpen this guy. Now, yeah, 
see how that gets it that nice highlight while, while still keeping some of that color underneath it. There's also a little bit of a white highlight around the brim. And yeah, it might be helpful if y'all were able to kind of like see what I was working from as I was doing this. And I took a picture, but I'm just kind of working from that guy standing up on my shelf. But as I was drawing it, I realized like how good of an example it was going to be because a lot of different colors, a lot of neutrals, but you can see how even if you're mixing a bunch of different browns, you're getting big variety in these colors and kind of how you can make a lot of this stand out. It's got a fairly cool double lighting from where a couple of my lights are. Highlight there, another highlight there, which makes that buckle pop even more. Shift that from bright white highlight to just a yellow. It's still a little bright, so I'm going to find my dark brown. I'm just going to do a quick layer. Pay a little bit of extra attention to some of these areas. Darken it up and keep my contrast. Kind of ditch some of that yellow from lightening up that brown. Look at that. That's a hat. And if you ever wonder, like, why I give you guys a lot of time on your projects it's because if you play around with the materials you're gonna be shading the hat for a class period all right so got the hat now let's work on that hand so well Actually, I'm going to keep rolling with the browns while I've got them. And I'm going to start hitting up his um, wristband and his elbow. So, that does not appear to have any of that Tuscan red. Don't really know about even the goldenrod. It looks like it's... I'm going to start with like a base coat of the Sienna Brown. And then I'll probably go back in with the Dark Brown for... And actually, yeah, that's about the right color. It's nice having that other brown underneath it. And it actually looks like I'll probably be doing the black for a lot of that. And then I'll fade it back out with the dark brown that way i'm not it's not looking like an outline so much as actual shadows all righty So, I went ahead and put down a pretty solid uh, layer of that, um, that light brown, sienna brown. And 
think I'm going to go ahead and just go in with the black for these shadows. That way I can just try to straight fade them back into the, uh, that dark brown. My nose keeps getting on the camera. It's throwing me off on the screen. Because I just about destroyed my document camera trying to um, get it set up for these videos. But it's cool, it's masking tape together. Alright, so. I think it's a pretty good base layer, which, ooh, that is not showing up on the screen hardly at all. Let me see if it helps if I trim the... Yeah, that's better. It's not getting those glossy bits. Um, just wanted y'all to see that, so it wasn't just like, uh, I don't know what he's doing anymore. The hat looked alright. Okay, hit some of these highlights. Where this thing is tied. We go back to where the shadow is there. Kind of build that up back and forth. I think I need more of a point on that. It's not getting the uh that the wood um casing marking on it, but it's not getting the fine point that it, I need either. There we go. Let's see. have a little lighting from over here too so I'm going to go back in with the white looks pretty good. Alright, so I'm going to try to work on his shoulder pad down here, and just for an approximate, you know, here is what I'm working from. My phone's filthy. Yeah. Let's see. So, and see some of these details that I was working on. It's a little bit of a different angle because of where I'm sitting versus where um, the angle this picture was at. But it is nice to be able to zoom in and see those textures flat. Um, let's see, I bet I can probably get this a little bit better with it zoomed in like this. Best of both worlds, drawing from reference and drawing from observation. I get to use my old eyes to see, and then I get to kind of double check myself.
think I got the shaping of it off a little bit, which is probably one of the reasons I keep kind of going back and forth on this. May have overshot that. Oh, well. It'll come out in the wash. I'm not going to put it in the washing machine, though. All right, I do have a class starting in a couple minutes, so if anybody starts shouting Mr. Swatty, that is why. Um, but I wanted to go ahead, keep working on this a little bit. Um, you know, probably, which I think I got 30 minutes on this video, and then I'll have to switch to a new one, which is fine. So if you don't want to just watch me color some brown, um... You don't have to. I'll probably move on to a different color if that's not your thing. All right, now this is the elbow pad, and it is sort of high lit. A couple of these areas. Okay, kind of over exaggerating those dark areas and I'm actually gonna throw some black on here because down here that is uh, pretty much dark man they just blend so nice And that, ladies and gentlemen, that was Kennedy Wyland. She is uh, early to class. Play around a little bit with something to. S I don't know. I don't know if I'll try that out here or. Yeah, I'll just try it over here. I wonder if this. Hmm. Afraid that's gouging the paper too much. And sometimes you just need to scrape it off. Hey, Mr. Spotty. She's famous and she doesn't know it. All right, I'm going to stop this video here. Next one will probably be the green skin tones.